Hey, what's up? What's up? What's going on, everybody? Uh, what's going on? Uh, welcome in, everybody. So, what's up? Uh, uh, for Rip the Lip, I'm Ron Doman. My co host, uh, Kyle Hervey, and you're watching Over the Cushion, powered by MCM Contracting, serving Lehigh Valley for 33 years, owned and operated by Mark Daniels. Uh, this show is all about dirt track racing, covering news, current events, and talking to different drivers every single week. So, appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. Uh, huge thanks to our other sponsors, Bodie Marks Racing, uh, the Shop Automotive Detailing, or the shopdetails.com, uh, Smith Fabrication, Stagewood Modified, DH Graphics, Protec Roofing, and Nate Free Racing. Uh, if you'd like to be uh, part of the show or uh, sponsor the show, go ahead and reach out to me via Facebook Messenger or email me at riftleptv at gmail.com. We're live every Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, Facebook and YouTube. Well, not YouTube this week, but uh, once I get that sorted out, Facebook right now. Uh, but both of these will have the actual full length show later if you want to go watch them. And I believe Kyle's working on getting them all on Spotify if you want just audio versions of it. So appreciate everybody for hanging out and uh, coming to chat with us. Let me go ahead and see if I can get Kyle in here. Hey, what's up, Kyle? You got me? Yeah, I got you, Ron. How are you? What's going on, buddy? Not much. Just doing a little work right now, uh, throwing back some beers in preparation for our <laughs> guest today. <laughs> How are you, Ron? I am doing great, man. Besides the rain that happened yesterday, everything's uh, not too bad. Starting a new job yeah. tomorrow, and hopefully that goes well. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. I will take a little bit of rain. Sad to see it cancel some racing, but if it washes some of the pollen away to cure my allergies for a couple <laughs> days, I will take it. Yes, sir. I mean, my nose is already. I'm. I'm like itching my nose just hearing about that. So. Yeah, I. My awful. eyes. My eyes have been on fire for about <laughs> five days. My throat has been sore for three. So oh, I'm hoping. Man. I'm hoping to get over the allergy hump. Uh, soon. That has to suck when you're driving, like if you're uh, in the car and you're sneezing. Have you sneezed in yeah. a car before? Hmm. Like while you're going down the straightaway? 
I think so. <laughs> it's not something that happens com commonly. Sure. Uh, sometimes I'm pretty sure I forget to breathe in the race car. So mm. I've definitely sneezed like sitting and staging and stuff like that when I'm not super focused. I think I've sneezed a couple times while driving. Sure. Um, but it's not a common occurrence. <laughs> it just sounds funny, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like places like Action Track, where it's really just dust in a parking lot. You know, there's not a lot of trees and foliage around yep. to uh, get my allergies all twisted up. Gotta love it, man. Uh, any racing news this week? Not much. Um, no, not there was... Much. Uh, I was thinking about something I was going to say, and mm. I can't remember now. Joey Amantia took a tumble. In, uh, yeah, I saw that little uh, that little day. rollover from the uh, from some yep. sort of malfunction. But I, then I saw a video of uh, the Danny Dietrich talking talking some shit. <laughs> like the big show just big really rolled over or something. <laughs> he's talking. <laughs> he was talking that. to somebody. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. I he did took not a big. See that. He's like big show just took a big tumble. <laughs> 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 something silly, but uh, no, big, it, it was funny. Big time tip over. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> That looked like a pretty rough track there on qualifying, yeah. at least from the video. It looked pretty uh, pretty gnarly to start. Yeah, definitely. Um, Kyle Larson won today. Awesome. I was just trying to catch the last couple laps of that. Uh, Kyle, on the... Kyle Kirkwood won in IndyCar, so I guess it's just the day of the Kyle. So good good day for us. I guess. Uh, yeah, and you, you're a Kyle. I am a Kyle. Thanks for remembering. Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot. <laughs> Ugh, it's like your name's in front of me constantly. Uh <laughs> <laughs> non oval news uh hayden deegan got another podium at atlanta in supercross that's, cool. that's kind of cool he led he actually led a lap which is sweet um i think that was his first lap lap led in a main event and then hunter lawrence drove away um yeah. i think a guy's like six out of seven wins this year just like i mean he's been in it for a couple of years i guess but he's just kind of he, he needs to move up <laughs> It's about that time. Um, I don't think any other tracks really raced. Some of them were doing some practices. Like Pencan did a practice on Saturday. Uh, I think Five Mile Point did a practice on Friday, and then they ran tonight. They're running Sunday nights. Yeah, Greenwood um, ran last night. So as far as I can tell, you could race Wednesday to Sunday if you have the cars. So like Wednesday, you could go to Action Track. Thursday, if they're running, you could go to Bloomsburg. Yep. Friday, you can go to, well, like, Accord or Pencan, big cars. Saturday yeah. you can go Hamlin, uh, Greenwood. I guess Friday you can go to Linda's too. Uh, yeah. Saturday has a bunch of stuff, Fire and well. Sundays has Five Mile Point, and I guess what Lanco runs Sundays, or they run Saturdays. I think Lanco runs Saturdays. Yeah. I think either... they run both. I think they switch back and forth. Honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Either way, that's like. I, I want to say Lanco runs run Lanco runs Sundays on Fourth of July and Memorial Day weekend or something. Like, oh, do they run like a double header or something? When you, yeah, they will. Uh... They'll run Saturday Sunday, but when you have like Monday off is the only time I've raced Sundays up there. I think. Yeah, I don't know how it's gonna work with Five Mile with these guys like racing like on a week. Like I guess it's the same for people that were racing on a freaking Wednesday. Yeah, I mean that's kind of surprising they're able to fill that place up every Wednesday. But hey, you can do it and. You got the whole day to yourself. They will come. Exactly, man. Feel the dreams, baby. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's that much else. Everyone's just trying to get up and going when April wants to be super weird again. It's like, like this week, super, super nice. Monday through Friday, like perfect. No clouds, nothing. Saturday, yep. boom, rain. And apparently yep. Greenwood got no rain, and they got to run their show. Yeah, I, uh... I saw a couple of our buddies out there weren't running too hot. Nate Freed got banged up a little bit. And then Aiden, I was out last night and Aiden Donaldson's calling me looking for, uh, looking for advice to figure out where the grip went in his car. <laughs> and unfortunately he was not able to find it even with my help. Yeah. Well, Hey, I mean, uh, Nate Freed is his first, that's his first actual 600 race. And yep. he, I mean, as far, as far as I heard, he was doing really well. He was, yeah, you he know, was coming through. He was passing a bunch of cars, and he was keeping up with it. Oh, he shared the stream. Thanks. Um, uh, yeah, passing some cars and just keeping up. Like, he was keeping up with Aiden for a while, and then some people got, you know, turned around in front of him, and he just wasn't quick enough with the, with their reaction time. Or maybe he just couldn't 
you know, you couldn't avoid it. It's one of those things. Race and deal, you know what I mean? Probably feels bad, but yeah. it is what it is. But it's just cool to see the hard work kind of pay off as far as him hitting the sim constantly over the thing, yep. trying to get ready for the new car. And it, I mean, he looks comfortable. His time, his laps look really good at Hamlin. So I assume, or I anticipate him to do pretty well this year. Uh, yeah, Shelby McLaughlin runner. was running up front the whole time, ended up getting yeah. uh, sixth. Yeah, after they just did a motor swap from blowing up last oh week. Oh my I gosh! Believe. I know. I can't believe That's they were able to get cool. one, but they got they got a good one <laughs> yeah, apparently. Right. Yeah, um, right. Chad Sant ran really well. Uh, I guess who Quiggle won both the wingless and the winged races down there, so that's pretty cool. I mean, that's got to be hard to do. <laughs> I think they had like twenty eight wingless cars, so that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, I don't think there's any too much other news. Hopefully, we can get some racing in this oh, week. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Slidersville was kind of cool. I went to Slidersville Friday. Yeah, got to so fly the drone around drone. a little bit. Oh. That was kind of cool. Um, I got to get that and post that over on our Instagram. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit longer. I just decided to try to make like super long clips just to see. Yeah. How, how that went. I think the shorter versions work a little bit better currently. Yeah, but... how, how you like in flying the drone and getting that footage, figuring it's it out. It's really cool. And then just trying to get used to flying in the infield is kind of neat just to get yeah. used to it. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get more and more practice. I'm just trying to use it anyway and anywhere I can, honestly, just to just to fly it man it's super fun and it just yeah. it just gets such cool shots that are all stabilized it looks freaking sweet it was a cool angle to see um i specifically remember watching it uh, i don't know if it was junior slingshots or whatnot where they were going through three and four and they were bumping and banging it was a cool vantage point to have watching that yeah um them coming around like that to actually see what's happening so uh i think it would be cool um unfortunately you don't have like three sets of hands to be able to record from you know the tower at hamlin <laughs> I fly know. the drone and you know take some videos elsewhere so well luckily if i can if i can do it right the plan is to do to get there at like four or five o'clock do some interviews and everything before the racing starts during the heats i like to be in the infield to do drone and like corner footage and stuff and then yeah. you know try to charge a battery or something and then uh Set up norm where I normally do for the features to record them, but while mm -hmm. that's going on, I can have the the drone hovering because it'll hover for like an hour, or something. Yeah, that's you know true. what I mean? So I can oh, like, I can zoom over, get like a quick clip of like victory lane, and then bring it back, and then fit <laughs> start fil filming the other races, or like, you know, do do some cool stuff like that. Try to multitask, but yeah, Did it's literally just me. Have you flown it at like dusk or dark yet, and seen what the footage looks like? Yeah, at uh, Snyersville. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, it um, just it just tells me that there's low light, so the sensors don't work. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. So he's got to look out. Anyway, gotcha. let's we're cool. uh, we'll bring on our esteemed our esteemed guest here. Uh, he's a three time two seventy uh, champ at GVAT, and he has a six hundred championship there as well. Uh, I don't really know him that well. I don't know if you know him a little bit better. He seems uh, infamous in the racing community, at least in this area. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything to add to the intro uh, I, I do not i just i've known him known of him for a very long time and known that he is just an absolute character uh Amazing. i've also always been jealous of when he stenciled uh and spray painted miller light onto his wheels on the 600 or his tires <laughs> i thought that was pretty badass no but, uh, way that's pretty much all i have to add on to it Amazing. he's very well known Amazing. well rob welcome in my friend Boys, what's thanks up? for having me. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's go. Wait, hold on. You got to do it right. If you're going to do it, you got to do it like this. I already did it. Oh, oh sorry. Ooh. Cracking another one. <laughs> can you, if you can see the stream, I got me a tall boy for the for the All occasion. Right. Ah, that a boy. Proud of you. I got some bottles here. Personally, I would I would prefer uh, high life, but, you know, this will do. Well, I appreciate you uh, drinking the finest of pills there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man I'll so what's have, good i'll have to have both of you guys take like a picture of uh whatever you're drinking right now and send it to me after the stream so we can put it together for a little social media yes sir there. i'll take a picture right get now. it rolling right yeah yeah ron grab yours with your equipment i'll grab a picture of mine with mine so i just took a picture i don't I got no equipment there we go <laughs> so what's up rob how you been not too bad uh 
just uh, took this weekend off. I, I looked at the weather and old Jerry Kreveling up there at Greenwood Valley. He uh, he he has a an ability to wrestle out a storm better than I think any other track <laughs> owner there is. Like he, I, I have been there and watched that man paddle out in a canoe. It was a boat. It was actually okay, a boat. Okay. He paddled out in the middle of his track when it was literally flooded up to the walls. And it looked like he was futzing around with something. He pulled a plug, and two hours later, all the water's gone, and we're racing on one of the best tracks we've ever had. I mean, it's definitely that the moisture. The moisture stuck in that, in that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was not dusty that night, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tack. A lot of tack. Very nice. Uh, the only time I've ever been there, I think he hurt. He hurt his back or something that week, so he couldn't prep the track like he wanted. So like. It was just on the bottom the whole time, and everyone keeps telling me like, you know, they're they're pounding the walls there and stuff. And like I was ready to see it. It just <laughs> yeah, didn't happen. it's a uh, it's a bad <laughs> fast track. I gotta say, it's I mean, it's bigger than Lanco, and I think we turn quicker lap times around there. Really? Yeah. 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 That's sick. Yeah. Lanco looks like a. I, like a... I, I think the the track record is like a, I want to say a ten two. Sheesh. And it's it's fast. It's, Damn, like, it's like a slingshot around Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm going to be down at uh, Greenwood Valley, uh, whatever the days that uh, Hamlin's off. So I think like 6, 24, and then somewhere in August. So that'll be fun. I'm going to be with Nate Freed doing video stuff oh, for nice. him. So I'll be able to catch the hopefully good racing. <laughs> Get to see the old mean 15 out there, baby. That's right. Yep. <laughs> so so what do you guys want to know well we want to know where this all started because did like did you have family that race or anything like how did you dive deep into this racing game because you kind of taken over <laughs> so it goes back to my dad uh and his father were pretty big fans of racing back in the day and they they saw racing at uh flemington speedway god rest its soul um it's a beautiful Walmart now. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, as time came, somehow I existed. Uh, my dad would take me to Flemington Speedway, and we'd sit there and watch the dirt cars. And I, unfortunately, am old enough that I can remember seeing dirt racing at Flemington. Um, from there, he took me up to Snydersville in 90 four somewhere on there oh. and uh yeah easy with the old comments i mean i'm, I'm i was 94 <laughs> shit i was five years old i was negative two <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, that, that's a quick I'm, math right there i appreciate that i was born in the eight, in 89 man so i'm not like i'm not too young <laughs> i got you so and they uh they had cars going around there uh called well they're micro stocks and uh he asked me 12 years old i think he's like you want to run one of those and i was like sure okay yeah so <laughs> he, went, he went and bought a car for us and we got it all lettered up i still have the hood of that car my very first race car really? i will not get rid of it yeah it was hand painted wow uh, Back it's beautiful I, 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 well again with the old comments <laughs> um so we ended up first night out there my dad's like you know go out there just feel the steering wheel feel the, the gas feel the brake you know go out there and back in the day there used to be tons of uh micro stocks and uh i think we started like 24th and i finished like 20th or something like that and uh they were you know he was super proud and, you know that was great you know brought the car home in one piece <laughs> next week we we went back and uh got in there it does the same spiel like you know feel the you know, feel the gas, feel the brake, you know, feel the steering wheel, feel the weight of the car. And I was like, okay. I went out there, and like, you had to start in the back if you were a rookie, and you run, like, the yellow ribbons and stuff. And, um, oh, really? Yeah, cool. this is good. So that particular week, I drove from, like, 23rd up to 2nd, beating the back out of the leader. <laughs> and uh, I came in, and my dad was like, wow, that was great, you know. You did really good. I was like, Dad, Dad. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, you know all that stuff you told me about feel the steering wheel and the brake and all that? And he's like, yeah. I said, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that 
started our love hate relationship for each other in a garage pretty early on in, in my career. <laughs> but uh, so then uh, that's when Snydersville got kind of in trouble, I guess you could say, with the town or whatever. Oh. And they ended up clo- yeah, they ended up closing for a little bit. So I ended up running it up in uh, Accord, New York, and then I was out at Greenwood Valley, and that's when I made the transition from running those cars to uh, micro sprints when I was about 16. Jeez. Before there even were 600s over here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so that's uh, that's kind of how we got started this whole mess. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's been a hell of a ride, I tell you that. <laughs> I bet, I bet. How did you get into two seven? Is that kind of where you you jumped over to like the two seventies, the two strokes and stuff? Yeah. So my very first car was an eighty nine Stallard, um, and it was a right hand two seventy. You, you don't even see those anymore. Um, but I'm telling you, back in the day, two seventy racing was where it's at. It was like amazing. I mean, like Linda Speedway used to get. 200 of them on a night really? you know i mean like i remember oh, seeing yeah, a ton you, of them at, at hamlet because hamlin used to run them weekly and they used to get oh, a full I ran field. Hamlet too. and like yep. all, when i then when i started going get started getting back into racing after a few years like after college i was like oh what's like my mom was working at the track and i was just checking it out there was only like two to four of them per week or something yeah, like, yeah i think it was just like yep. glenn mccumber and alex reinsmith and those those guys were like the die the die hard two seventy years, man. Yeah, they did not want to give that track up. No. I think both of them run out of Greenwood now. I love Glenn. He he's a he doesn't live too far away from here. I, I occasionally see him on job sites too. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's he's a he's a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, I actually grew up with Glenn and Alex racing quarter midgets with those guys um, from when I was a little kid. So I was always pretty close friends with them. Yeah, they're, they're good people. For sure. Yeah, um, the 270s look cool. I mean, it's kind of just like foot to the floor, lift for a second, and it's kind of like, like you're driving a slingshot almost because you have the wing on? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> no, I, ne- I, never drove, <laughs> I never drove a slingshot. Okay. Um, I, I've driven, you know, different classes of go-karts, uh, uh, 600, uh, 270. I, I ran a Sportsman Modified one or took one around Big Diamond once. That was fun. Um but a 270 is its own kind of beast. It, it is a, it's a very violent car. If I could, if I want to label it something, it, that motor, because it's a two stroke and makes a lot of horsepower for a very small engine shakes the ever living crap out of a fucking car. <laughs> like, it, and like, they seem like when they're... you're, Oh God, good. Like you're going around there and, you know, I've run some big tracks with a 270. Like I ran Grandview with a 270. That was Jesus. awesome. Yeah, that Whoa. was that was wild. That was fun. Um, <laughs> I also did. I also did it in a uh, a 600, and that was just stupid. Goodness, <laughs> we were going way too fast. I think uh, the 600s <laughs> ended up being like the third fastest car that has ever been around Grandview. Really? I bet, yeah. man. With that, with those banking and stuff. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's probably. Well, the, I the problem. The, the problem they always had it was they never gave us a good track uh and it would ru- i mean we would burn right fronts right off the cars i mean like they just oh. hardest tires you could get you put on for grandview and uh it was fun though and scary fast actually i'll tell you a fun story okay I probably shouldn't tell her but yeah let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> so uh i was running for uh eric ankowitz at the time uh and he had me in his car and uh it was a really really tight car like and i am for anybody that doesn't know me i'm six four and 250 pounds on a good day i might, I might need to <laughs> we're like, on we're like the same size you're just a couple inches taller <laughs> <laughs> i might have to back off the beers and the the hamburgers a little bit but <laughs> um so I, i'm crammed in this thing and it is uncomfortable but it's fast and I, 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 I'm going around a track and my legs are just falling asleep. Like I can't you know, like to the point where like my foot is just dripped on the throttle and I can't even lift it to pull it off. Oh, and then like, shit. yeah. And I'm, I go to try to touch the brakes and that leg ain't working either. 
So I'm like, I'm I'm dangerous out here. I I, I should just, not. Be. We're yeah, I'm like literally I'm sending it. <laughs> yeah. So and I'm frustrated and. Tex Snyder ends up going, I don't know if you know that name, but he was an old timer in the uh, 600s and 270s. Great guy. Uh, he ends up going for a serious tumble and I almost hit him because I couldn't hit the brakes. I like, I went to hit like, you know, you, your brain is sending signals to, yeah. you know, to your foot to do its job and nothing happens. It's pretty <laughs> terrifying. So I was like, this is dumb. What am I doing? I pulled into the infield, and if you've ever been to Granby, you got to pull into the infield and then drive up across the track to get off it. Well, I'm, I have a little bit of an anger issue, so <laughs> I, I rip my belts off, just as I'm coming up the the banking of the track to head off. And as soon as I took my belts off, all the sensation came back into my legs, and I was like, hmm. So I turned back and drove back out on a track, and I raced Grandview uh, in a wingless 600 without seatbelts on. Jesus Christ. What a freaking I, I, man. <laughs> I wasn't even drinking yet. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was. I might I might have won, won, won the race. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up rolling a right front. On, like, the, the right front just exploded on a car oh. coming out of the corner, and, like, like, you know, nobody hit me, and I just drove it into the infield. And I was like, oh, thank God. What the hell was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, if I didn't blow up that tire, I would have still been cruising. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would have I've been wheel, trying to wheel to the front. I went from, I think, like 20th. I think I was up to, like, 10th or something still coming. Like, the car was a bullet. But I was just like, <laughs> every car I passed, I'm, like, cl- clenching my butt cheeks together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, don't Jeez, do anything stupid. I'll die. Man, the, I think the first time I ever saw a 270 was at Mockatech Speedway. Oh, you saw them 270s up at Mockatech? That's cool. I've been up there one time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my uncle raced there as long as I can remember. I've been going to that racetrack when it was a racetrack, I don't know, from really young. And then my mom started running at Five Mile Point, so I was running up there. Or with them, she was running a uh, factory stock. I guess that's what they're called now. It used to be called Pure Stocks. But he ran, my uncle ran like Modifieds and uh, Sportsman back when... They didn't have crate sportsmen back then. It was uh, an open sportsman. So it was like a modified motor. Yeah. You just had to run a two barrel carb, which honestly they should yeah. do now. They should just, everyone should have a, like a nine to one compression ratio, compression ratio motor, you know, like a 358. Uh-huh. And then just put a two barrel yeah. on it for sportsman and a four barrel for modified. Have fun. Like, yeah, I mean, you know? not, you're not wrong there. I mean, they, they need, modifieds need one set of rules because they're Seriously. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. There's too much um, money getting thrown around anymore. You can like, but go my dad. Ham. My, so, <laughs> what I have to say is that my dad, uh, before he got me into racing, was mm-hmm. a part owner in a modified uh, back in the day that ran um, East Windsor, Flemington. I don't think they ever went to Nazareth, but um, Orange County, a lot, a lot of the yeah. the tracks around there. And um, he would tell me, like back in the day, they'd run for a straight week, and it was absolutely normal. Like every night of the week, you know, it was, I, I might be screwing up the order. It might be Orange County on <laughs> Sunday. Then you're down to Flemington on Monday, up to over to uh, uh, East Windsor on Tuesday, over to Nazareth another day. I mean, like just, and I'm like hearing this stuff and I'm like, God damn, that must've been fun. Yeah. Like I mean, man, modified racing used to be the shit, man. They used to have like yeah, the, the, full, the full, like, uh, what was it for? Like the Eckerd 200. Or like down in, uh, what is it? It's not Middletown. Where is it? Where was it? The big 200 oh, lapper? Um, yeah, Orange I know County what you're talking about. Or something? No, no not Orange County. Syracuse. That, that's the one they did. Oh, it? Sy- they had Syracuse where they ran there. And then, I, you're right. I don't know if they went to like Lebanon Valley, I think maybe. But they, There's a track up by Syracuse yeah. that they'd all leave there and come back to Syracuse. Mm-hmm. But they had like full on like TV covers like it was NASCAR. Like yeah it was yep. amazing i like I, I go back on youtube and i watch some of the old ones with like mm-hmm. you know mccready and brett hearn and all these guys man it's just like super cool to watch because like they would follow them through the year and just like you it was like watching like a nascar broadcast but for dirt modified so it's the best yeah i mean so i mean growing up at flemington my my hero growing up was pouch uh pouchy senior there and oh, now yeah. i'm buddies with the family so it's like it's kind of it's kind of strange you know how how, <laughs> how tight-knit cool. the racing community is 
We had Junior on uh, one of our earlier episodes. It was funny trying to get him on the Discord. He's such a nerd. He he, he was pissed because he he was having trouble getting on the Discord. That's what I said. I can't wait to bust his balls and be like, how is a smart kid like you can't figure out how to get on this thing? And my drunk ass can figure out how to do it. (laughs) You know, like, geez. Yeah, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to question those rides you're in. Maybe I should step up to the place. <laughs> yeah, put me in the 15, man. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. We don't even have to change numbers. I already got it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. But That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I just over to this career, we'll call it that I've had here in racing. Like I have had entirely too many fun stories, and I, you know what? I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried for the kids that are coming up through that. Man, they don't get to experience anything like that anymore. Anything at the track, it's just get to the track, unload, race a little bit, throw your car back in the trailer as fast as you can as soon as the night's over and you boogie Please. out of there. I mean, we used to all oh, hang out. I know. Yeah. Dude, you know? Mock Attack, you'd finish up at like 11. We wouldn't pull out of there till 3 or 4 in the morning. Those guys were – Oh, yeah. Like I was only like, bag. I was only like <laughs> 8 or 10 or something. And I would just love hanging mm-hmm. out with those guys. Like those guys are smoking like three, three or four packs a night. Just like <laughs> yep. taking down tons of beers and stuff, and like we got to yep. be up for church in the morning. They're like, "Ah, we'll be, all right. we'll be all right, boys. Let's go." <laughs> the yeah. Lord, the Lord will understand. He will understand. We're just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, it's all about it. forgiveness. Love those <laughs> nights right. when you're hanging out. Everybody else is gone. Somebody just throws down a 24 pack in the middle, and you all stand in a circle, just drinking and bullshitting. Yes, sir. Honestly, no. I think honestly, I think that's how I got as popular as I am is because <laughs> I'm the beer. It's the gotta be the beer. beer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody knows the gin of the night. Go to Rob's trailer. It's full of fucking beer. No oh, matter if he won, it didn't matter if he won or he got junked. Somebody's gonna be sitting there drinking. True story. <laughs> I think the first time I've ever seen you in person was at Halen last year when you won the the winged race. I was trying to oh, snap yeah. some pictures of you uh, drinking with whoever was whoever was standing there, but you're like, <laughs> you're like we won, boys. Give me, give me a can. <laughs> he doesn't even know who was standing there. He just grabbed Probably the first not. person that would drink with him. <laughs> um, that's probably very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I mean that is that is a fun thing you get with you know being a personality in racing, and a lot of people like to be part of that. And I'm okay with it, man. I'll, yeah. I'll drink a beer with anybody, you know. And just the other day, I was up at the there's a bar up in like uh, I guess it's Buttsville, maybe up in <laughs> up by like Hot Dog Johnny. There's yeah. a uh, there's a uh, bar up there called the Log Cabin, and I was in there, and I was uh, just sitting there drinking a beer by myself. Just, and some guy started talking racing, and we ended up knowing people that you know, mutual friends, and he's buddies with uh, Stuart Friesen, and I was telling him the time before Stuart Friesen was Stuart Friesen. We were up in uh, Rhode Island uh, for Ryan running the indoor TQ deal. Ryan Smith, that is, and uh, we had we were the only ones that brought beer. I mean, you guys know the Smiths. So oh yeah, you know that we yeah we roll around with beer. That's how we did it. I mean, I I literally bought a pit spot at Hamlin with three thirty packs once. So, yes, go. <laughs> that should be that should be a permanent spot. That should be a permanent spot. And he goes, oh, no. he goes, Rob, you park wherever the hell you want. I said, you got it. <laughs> Hell so, yeah, man! Before uh, Stuart Friesen was Stuart Friesen, he's sitting there. I don't know if he was a stoner or what else he was, but he <laughs> they, we had the party in our room. I think Mandy was on. Mandy Pouch was only like seventeen at the time. <laughs> She's making googly eyes at Ryan Smith, and we're just slamming beers. And <laughs> next thing I know, I keep seeing like this flash of light, and I'm like, "What the hell is that?" And Stuart Friesen is sitting there. With like hairspray and a lighter, just blowing it off, and it's almost setting the drapes on fire. I grabbed him by the back of the neck, <laughs> threw him out of the damn room. So now it's kind of damn. funny. Now he runs NASCAR, that's, and I sit here fantastic. driving six hundred, drinking beer. I don't know. You got a pretty good deal going, man. Yeah, <laughs> well, man I'm not complaining. That's awesome. <laughs> that's too I mean, good. So many stories. Oh, I bet. Uh, man. I mean, we uh, another good one is uh, when they had uh, I don't know if. You guys can remember they had a uh, uh, speed weeks for the 600s, but it was winged. It wasn't any of this wingless crap. <laughs> <I can tell laughs> are, you, are you an anti 
six hundred wing or uh, wingless guy? I'm not anti. I'll do it. I mean, like I ran the Trenton deal, and sure, uh, I'll run. You know, every now and then I get a bug in my ass to try it and see that I suck at it, and then just blame everybody else for it. So, <laughs> um, uh, so they used to do a winged tour. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. And uh, it was fantastic. They, they used to. We used to bring those things to Lincoln. Man, they should uh, bring that Lincoln back. Trailway, Fat Valley, uh, you know. So Ryan Smith was running Jason Van Dorn's car, and we had, um, we called him Bucket, but Greggy Smith, who I don't think is a relation to Ryan, but who knows. But we called him Bucket. <laughs> and uh, we all got in Ryan's toter, and we did the whole tour. Well, I think it was, we were supposed to leave Lincoln. Yeah, that's what it was. We were leaving Lincoln to head to Path Valley and the toter home blew up or the turbo blew out or something. Oh. So we ended up, we limped the, the, uh, truck to, uh, like a Mac deal or a Caterpillar dealer or whatever. And, you know, they're like, uh, Randy's like, well, I need that thing fixed. So get it fixed now. And, uh, <laughs> It, it, this is at like one in the morning and uh they're there and so we're drinking beer and they're like guys you uh you can't be drinking beer inside the garage here <laughs> and we're like well uh, where are me. we gonna drink beer then they're like you can go to the end of the parking lot so i think it was <laughs> me and ryan both hooked <laughs> hooked hands and grabbed hold of the cooler and drug that thing all the way to the end of the parking lot. And we all moved the party over there and we just sat there and drank beer Hell yeah! until, <laughs> until we were, until we were out of beer. Well, now it's time to go to bed. I mean, we got a race tomorrow. So we go back in the garage and they're like, you guys can go sleep in the truck. That's no big deal. We'll work on it while you're sleeping. All right. So we all climbed back in the toter and saw on wood. And all of a sudden I, I remember waking up and I'm, I'm getting like jostled and, shaking all around and everybody's bouncing around and they going what the what the fuck is going on here <laughs> they didn't when they did a shift change they didn't tell the new guys that were coming in that there was guys sleeping in a toter so they fixed it and they took it for a test ride <laughs> and they had no idea we were in the back we were bouncing around like bouncy ball no oh way yeah That's that so was fun good. holy <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of fun with the, those guys like Ben Whittaker, Ryan Smith. Yeah, Ben Whittaker's in the, in the chat right now. He's uh, yeah. Yep. He, he's he's <laughs> washed up and has a kid now. He's done. He's still he's still <laughs> running that late model, man. Come on. I know, I know. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go see him run this year. I I love, I absolutely love going and seeing my friends run. It's just uh, it it almost anymore because I'm old. Uh, it's more fun <laughs> to watch other people run than it is for myself sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I I have raced a little bit, but since I can't afford it, I just grabbed a camera and started doing it. So now I get to go to the ra races, which is my favorite place in the whole world, every week, and get to hang out with people and just film them. You know, what I mean? and they seem to really like it because they want yeah, video. Of, they want video of their stuff, and no one else will do it. So <laughs> remember, uh, remember loud pedal. Yeah. No. They they need to they need to come back. They they made some great videos. I mean I I, I don't know if you know this. I used to make a couple videos too. Oh yeah, yeah. We, maybe like, we bring you, we could bring you on to rip the lip. You can. I mean, I just brought Kyle on so he can. He I don't envy do that shit too. at all, man. <laughs> I made I made two really good ones, and I got nothing but respect for you because sitting there and editing it just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Old of you to assume Ron edits stuff. I do sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay, with with the feature races, I literally just take out the cautions and put a little dissolve in between. Yeah, that's that's, that's all literally I do all I do videos. for the for the for the feature videos. Like as easy and quick as possible. But like the drone stuff, I'm starting to do. I'm actually like putting it to music and stuff and making it like yeah, yeah. That's, that's somewhat what you gotta do. somewhat yeah, that's, watchable. That's where I draw the line. I'll send a. a I, there was a fun one I did for the indoor racing when we did. Uh, Van, again, Van Doren, or as my friends like to call him, Van Doran. Um, is that uh, is that Tanner's dad? Yeah. Yes. Jason. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't know how far back their racing went. I know like he, like Tanner's well, like a, a little beast right now. Oh, absolutely. But believe it or not, uh, Jason used to fit inside of a race car. 
<laughs> I believe he's, he's it. He's gonna punch me. He's, he's gonna, gonna punch, he's gonna punch me right in the, the face. throat next time he sees me. <laughs> I just, I think it's. I, I last time I, I saw him, I didn't actually talk to him, but like I saw him at Bloomsbury last year, and like uh-huh. T- Tanner pulled in for some reason, but it's the car, nothing was wrong with the car, and his dad was just losing his fucking mind, and it was, it like I, I feel for the guy, but it was so funny, cause like you know he's just gonna be like, what the, what the hell are you doing? Get back out there. You know, like that's, Tanner probably feels dude, something Jason, wrong with it, but it, like if there's nothing wrong, he's like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> J- Jason has been one of my good, one of my best fucking racing friends for a lot of years, <laughs> and even you know with Ryan and you know Ben, we could we we just love getting him worked up. You know, oh, like he he, he seems he, like so good. <laughs> the hands start going, he's pulling his hair out, he's <laughs> bouncing all up the walls. I fucking love it. He was yeah. he actually. Uh, throw him under the bus he was out there drinking with me last night (laughs) (laughs) his wife was like i've had enough of you go go hang out with rob i've had enough of your stuff yeah here hold on a second you hear this all right now we're good no didn't i didn't didn't hear it i didn't hear it you're gonna have to get another one well you're gonna have to wait till i finish this beer then (laughs) i'm almost i'm almost through mine i might have to get up and go get another one Next, hey, next time next time you're at Hamlin we'll do uh do you ever see that thing on flow they do like one lap one beer yeah we'll have, we'll have to do that we'll have to that's do that gonna, that's not gonna work for me all right how about one <laughs> one lap as many as you can drink in one how about as many as you can drink in one lap that's that's it that's what we do <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll ke- I'll keep a counter on the on the video when I edit it we'll see how many. <laughs> you guys uh do you guys know uh Bert Wojak he's the uh announcer uh I think he, I think he announced for um, the USAC 360s or I forget who he was announcing with. No, no, no I'm sorry. He was the announcer for URC last year. Yeah. Great mm-hmm. dude. He's a good dude. So he took a Snapchat of me once because I showed up to Orange County. Another fun story. <laughs> I'm all banged up from the night before. I'm just at home, just relaxing. And Alex Bright calls me and he's like, yo, bud, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, fucking nursing a hangover. What else do you think I'm doing? <laughs> he's like, I need you to do me a huge favor. I was like, what do you need? He's like, I need you to go to the shop and grab my shocks that I forgot and bring them to the track. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Because Bob Hubbard's shop isn't too far down the road from me. So I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're at Bridgeport. I was like, okay, great. So I rock it over to the shop. I pick up the shocks. And I start heading to Bridgeport, and I was like, looking at just – being oblivious driving down the road scrolling through facebook and i'm looking at all this racing and i don't see anything going on at bridgeport but i see a lot going on at um orange county so i'm like what the fuck is going on and like my snapchat (laughs) is blowing up and i finally start opening it and people are like they're not racing at bridgeport you're not going to bridgeport you're going to orange county so i call alex back he's not picking up i'm still headed to bridgeport then he finally picks up like dude where are you he's like orange county I'm like, you are such an asshole. You told me you're at Bridgeport. So I had to turn around, <laughs> rock it up to Orange County. So I'm a little pissed off. And Ben Whittaker's there with his, with his dad, Big Al, who's like my hero. I love Big Al. Oh, man. Al's was a legend, man. Even back oh, in, in Mockatech he... and stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Seriously. Like, yeah, he would do stuff that just always cracked me up. We've been sitting there. <laughs> I used to smoke. I don't smoke anymore, but we'd be smoking a cigarette and he'd be smoking it and then just take a drag out of it and just be like they don't have a hold of me <laughs> and just there's a little <laughs> that just would the little just things crack me the fuck up i just love him uh... it, it also explains why ben is as weird as he is <laughs> <laughs> but um so i get the get the shocks to alex and they're like you coming into pits bob says we'll pay your way into the pits i'm like i want to go into the pits i got ben and a couple friends out here so back to Bert, Bert finds out I'm there, so he comes running over, and he said he literally just followed a trail of Miller Lite cans until he found me. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. <laughs> There's a pile of them. Oh, no. I guess you can drink yes, more sir. since it's a light beer, right? Is that, so, is that the, the consensus? I mean, I just drink it because it <laughs> tastes good. It's 96 calories, 3.4 grams of carbs. I mean, know your product. I guess, I, yeah, I guess so, man. I mean, I usually drink. I usually drink Yingling, so I'm, this is a 
lot different. Oh, man. Do you Dude, have a like, barcode game. tattooed on your wrist or anything? <laughs> yeah, Bobby, you have haven't a... you seen my helmet? I feel like I, I feel like you, I could see like you getting the Pilsner logo somewhere. I mean, I I think about it. Why I'd not, like man? get right the in your shoulder. Represent. Get like get, get it like as paduous, but in like that Pilsner font. Yeah, a fine, yeah. a fine, you know what? You know what? 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 Paduous. Yes, look at paduous because no one is gonna fucking know how to say it or spell it or anything. So uh, I'll just put pajamas. Good because yeah. I I didn't know how to say, say your name till this week. <laughs> I just, I just, I just figured it was pajamas. A fine Dude, pajama. I'm going to tell you something. I've run uh, <laughs> Tulsa Shootout now twice. And if they could butcher my last name anymore, I'd be impressed. Although they're not the worst. I... The, wor- the worst track that ever announced my last name was Pen Can when we ran 270s up there. I was so offended. I went up to the, uh, I went up to the tower. Really? <laughs> They tried to pronounce my last name like it's French. I'm Lithuanian. They That's tried a to say it in French, and they, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have our balls still. Um, <laughs> they tried to they tried to call me Pajui, and I was like, nope, unacceptable. I am not getting called that. <laughs> I've been called a lot of different things. I was like, that is not happening. <laughs> oh <laughs> right my team. god. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. Speaking of the Tulsa like... shootout, I mean, you had quite the, uh, quite the, I guess, introduction. Or like, you won your heat and you got uh, interviewed by somebody that you already previously knew, and they were talking about you a bunch yeah. of flow. Like it was super fun to watch. It was like, hey, Chris, I don't know, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you personally, but I was like, hey, he's from this area. You know what I mean? And now he's down at Tulsa, yeah. kicking ass. How well, was, how was mean... that experience? I guess. Uh, Tulsa, if anybody gets the chance, they should do it at least once. It is, it is not cheap to get out there. I mean, it costs a lot of money to get out there, but when you're out there and you're doing it, it's something else. That that place is, I mean, I, I've been very fortunate. I teamed up with, uh, Keith McIntyre. He's really taken care of me. Keith ran, uh, he ran micros and he ran, uh, sprint cars and midgets for a little bit before getting out of uh racing and he just he came back into racing so his uh, son, didn't his son race a little bit uh or he that, just that... had a son so no but his Diff- father okay was keith senior and yeah, he yeah, passed yeah. away tragically so oh. uh keith jr i guess would it be uh is who i am teamed up with uh they run a tree service out of the Stroudsburg area oh, mcintyre nice. tree service Little plug there for you know all the sponsors. <laughs> Good, yeah, plug them, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plug, plug this beer in my face. That's right, man. I mean, if there was ever anybody to get a full ride sponsorship from a beer company, it has to be you. It's me. I deserve it. it. And to, I know like, that. Like, can you can you imagine how good a full wrap of Miller Light would look on the car, and and then paying you like you're like, hey, here, go b- build a new car. Here's twenty grand. So I gotta I gotta give it to. Uh... I'll give it to Justin Peck. He kind of stole my thunder a little bit. Now, granted, I've been doing it longer. Sure. But uh, he uh, he kind of wins bigger races than me, so I guess I can give it to him. But he, he's pretty I mean, good about Sam and Miller. Put you in the same you car. Know? I mean, I'd, I'd like to see that. At least give Honestly, you the opportunity. I'll tell you what. I think, <laughs> uh, I think I'm old enough now, or I don't know if I can do it. I mean, sober. Right? Okay. <laughs> a lot of those guys that run those big sprint cars are not like young guys. I mean, they, sure, there's a bunch of them, but yeah. like, like some of the fast well, look, ones are older. Look than at me. Lance Deweese. I mean, Lance Deweese could be a grandpa. You know what I mean? He might actually be. He, I don't. He might be, but boy, that dude can can run oh, at Williams Grove, yep. dude. <laughs> yep. No, I mean he's great at Port Royal, Williams Grove. I think Lincoln is the one he doesn't do the best at. And but his, it's always his fun to son's watch. Uh, doing pretty well in the 600 down in. Uh, I yeah, heard he was down yeah, in yeah. Uh, Millbridge and stuff. Have you ever gone down to Millbridge? I have not been to Millbridge yet. We, uh, me and Keith, were talking about maybe taking a trip down this year. Uh, I got to get uh, another PA legal motor. I, I own. <laughs> I got. I have two of them, but they're out of my motor builders getting rebuilt. And right now, I still have my outlaw on from running out in Tulsa. Gotcha. I don't think they run wing though. I think they just run wingless. I, yeah, no, I'm gonna have to suck it up. That sucks. <laughs> Cause like, so like, I've only watched really wingless racing, and I kind of like that. Like, this, like it's yeah. a little more aggressive at sliders and stuff. But like, 
um, when the wings were, when you guys came over last year to Hamlin and ran the wings, like that was just like, opened my eyes. I was like, holy cow, these guys are super quick. It's kind of, it looks pretty twitchy like they normally are, but like, I would like love to see that as a regular mainstay at Hamlin. Cause like with the two different turns, I think it would be a super cool show every week. Cause it was a damn good show the first time you guys showed up. I thought it was a great show, especially since I won it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and, and a car that um, didn't have any lettering or nothing on it was just like... <laughs> I, I am it's not me. lying to you one, <laughs> one bit. Me and Keith finished that car an hour before it hit the track. And like I was literally still nut, bo- nut and bolting it uh, before we went out for warm-ups. So good. <laughs> yeah, so like I, I rolled out on that track like literally going all right what's gonna fall off you know <laughs> like what did i forget <laughs> oh shoot so, i mean him uh, to run around hamlin with a wing car <sighs> is it like it, love hate I, I think i i think it could work i mean it did work but like passing's gonna be tough Ham, hamlin's a tight track i'll give it to the guys that run there uh it's Passing's... not one of my favorite tracks uh <laughs> but it's not bad mm-hmm. but like Passing stuff to like, begin with. I, what I would like to see Randy do is actually knock the banking back out of it, and uh, or or just have a very progressive banking, but further out. So like, if a guy's yeah. gonna commit to running the top, he's got to be up there, and if a guy's gonna run the bottom, he's got to be out of the gas. Like there needs to be more of a technical aspect of that track mm-hmm. as a driver because part of my language uh i call it the retard line is basically anybody can do it because you let the car drift enough and that banking hooks the car and keeps you straight and you're not far enough off the tires that if you like diamond somebody you can cross them up and get underneath them and go so you're forced to kind of in a sense rough them up like you get on their bumper going into the corner and you just give them a kiss right before they go in there and say good luck (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that's the only way you're gonna fucking pass somebody i feel yeah. i mean i mean it seems like the only way i've seen people pass is one and two they just diamond it and you know carry it down in the into three and four and that's really the only passing i've seen you know what i mean yeah it's it's, it's hard to pass the, it's hard sling, to pass the slingshots get around there pretty good they do um, i honestly i honestly enjoy watching them at hamlin i i cannot stand the slingshots at action track <laughs> it just the track is just and it's not too big it's nothing like that some of the best slingshot racing i've ever seen was at like the monster tracks where like they're getting in line they're almost drafting they're doing kind of cool things like i like that yeah but when they're they're kind of stuck at the action track you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and it's and it's not the smoothest i put a I put a gopro no, I, on, I bet i feel I put bad a, for the back for everybody <laughs> wrong. i put a gopro on danny bakafuska's car Mm-hmm. speed weeks last last year and i was like i, I watched the footage I, I messaged him i was like are you are you okay like do you have like a, <laughs> is your brain okay because like it was just like crazy let's, how let's bumpy be honest. It is. i love danny but his brain was never okay <laughs> <laughs> dude is so passionate i love talking to him but he like gets out of breath super quick because he's just like i gotta get all everything in my head i gotta get it to you as soon as possible and he's like, absolutely, yeah, it's great. It is so <laughs> he, fantastic. He, he is, he is a ball of fire. That's that's for sure. Love it, dude. No one's has more <laughs> passion for racing than that man right there, and he will give it a hundred million percent every time he gets in that car. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I I don't like how action track runs in the slingshot now, especially um, the older track. You used to be able to get two and three wide pretty easily and run. Different yeah. Lines, yep. But but now it's it's honestly terrible. It's not enjoyable to run. That's why I went away from running there in the slingshot. So it just it just looks like it beats you guys to death. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I, I I've run action track when I and yes, I did the wingless deal there, and I had some success there. I never won, uh, but I I mean, I don't know what happened. I used to be decent there. Uh, <laughs> I I probably stopped caring to be honest. But um, <laughs> just. They, they just get beat to death, and like the track doesn't doesn't do it for me that much anymore. Yeah, no. it used to be cool. It used to be cool. I like and the old layout. That's the good thing yeah. with Hamlin, man, because it 
Randy's been doing such a good job. Like he makes it so so smooth. It seems like, and like they're passing nope, on the nope, outside, nope, they're passing nope, on the nope, inside. Nope, nope, nope. Sometimes too smooth is a thing. True. Yeah. Because yep. if it's too if it's too smooth, you never make a mistake. And mistakes in our kind of racing anymore, even you know, six hundreds, slingshots, two set well, two seventies are different. That they're a different animal. Sure. But uh if you make a mistake in a two seventy, you lose like four spots. You make a mistake in a six hundred you might lose a spot. You make a mistake in a slingshot, you're probably looking at one to two spots. That's how, I mean, like, that's just how I, I watch that. Yeah. Uh, the 600s motor, they, they recover so quickly that when you make a mistake, Solar it just power. straightens up and pulls you out of it. The 270, if you miss a shift, four guys went by you because they just, they're that good. Like, you, you take a guy, like, I raced with back in the day, like, uh, Names you guys are going to know. Sean Stoltz, Ross Perchak, Mike Rutherford, you know, all, all the skiuses because there's 9 million of them. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Toby Blumenshaw. Like, those guys are, they're on it, you know. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. And it's it's amazing when you miss, you, you make one small mistake in a 270 and it shows. And that's, that's why I have so much respect for the 270s. A lot of people don't like them because they're two strokes. They sound funny. They make smoke and, you know, whatever. Yeah. They are not much slower than a 600. And Ross Perchak half the time is faster than literally three quarters of the field of a 600 <laughs> race, yeah. which is insane. Like, I always tell him, like, dude, grow a set and just run with us. Like, just, just see what you can do. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But uh, I pulled I, mean, up, I pulled up this old video on your from your Facebook, and I don't know yeah. if you can, can I don't know if you can see the stream at all. Uh, I could try. <laughs> I know what it, what it what got. So it says GVAT dogfight, twenty eighteen. What was it? GVAT what? Dogfight. Oh yeah. And it's like yeah, I, I know it's going on. It's I watched it earlier just to see what it was and. I've got to say, like this looks. I, I don't. I don't know whose car it's from. And I'm guessing well, you're the, the back of. Um... I'm guessing you're the 15. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. This. I mean, this looks like the best. Like this looks like such exciting racing. Like both for you guys driving and for the fans. And and the I track's mean, a little worked a little bit. You know what I mean? There's. Some... Yeah. I mean, that was a. Uh, that was a great night. I, I know what that was. That was that was off the back of Brandon Cook's car, and that was me battling with. Tom Pichetta and uh, Johnny Smith, and uh, both Johnny of those Smith. guys are, yeah, John Smith. Yeah, you he, know Johnny he, Smith, right? Yeah, he runs uh, the big cars now. Yep, yep. He's a he's a good guy. Oh, uh, my leg's cramping. Oh my god, I'm dying. Ah. How many beers in, and you have a leg cramp? That ain't good. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh, that was an awesome run. Uh, I ended up finishing second that night. I got to the leader, but. Uh, I really loved that footage uh, because it really did depict Greenwood as even with wings on three wide, just cutthroat. I never came off the top type racing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's fun. Yeah. Like the, 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 the track had a bunch of character, like just like different ruts and stuff. And you guys are just like yep. dicing it up like this. This looks like a freaking blast. Like just just hammer down man it looks super yeah. cool yeah if you uh if you scroll more through there if you look through the videos <laughs> you could find one of me uh it's a it's a video facing me and like the camera's facing my face and i'm driving pretty hard and uh you end up seeing me kind of what would be the word fuck up uh <laughs> i was i was running the top as hard as i could because that was the fast way at the time sure uh and uh the guy two guys in front of me i or i think i was i was third and second place ended up hooking with a lap car and worked up the track and i literally had nowhere to go and i just oh. you just see me you i lift real hard yeah. you see the car backfire brakes are locked <laughs> slam the wall and just start flipping jeez <laughs> No it's good, good stuff. It's good stuff for sure. <laughs> Man, you believe it's already been almost an hour? That's crazy. Um, it flies. Seriously. Uh, 
just I want to circle back to Tulsa. Um, sure. How was how was that experience overall as a driver? And then like you know winning on the big stage like that, being, you know getting your uh, interview, being able to walk on on the track with the flag and the beer in the back pocket, like <laughs> it's like an iconic photo at this point. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll do the interview first. The uh, the interview. <laughs> The, the first time I was out of Tulsa, uh, I've listened to some of the guys, you know, like Ryan Gret and, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the bigger 600 guys from back in the day. And they, they literally say to you, like, hey, when you go out to Tulsa, like, you got to understand these guys out west, they uh, they really look down on us East Coasters. They, they're not they're not our friends, even if they seem nice. Mm hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just talking. Yeah, you know, it, it, it can't, yeah it can't be that bad. <laughs> well. I found out that is a hundred percent true really? because I, I believe so. Uh, I started on a pole in my heat race and they, you know, they specifically said where the start start zone was. And I said, okay, you know, I knew where the start zone was. Now I'll jump a start out at Jerry land all day. Cause that's what I do. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, I wasn't going to about to go to somebody else's sandbox and, you know, screw with the cheerios so I, I, sure. you know, I went <laughs> i went where they said to go the guy on the outside of me just didn't go and i already was going to do a first gear start so i launched hard and i took off and they called the, they called it back and it called me for a jump i didn't jump flat out didn't jump so they took one of their favorite guys that started behind me and they put him on a pole because that's how it works sure and i was pissed because <laughs> out there it's all passing points you need as many points as you can get and when you're racing against 270 other guys you need to have some good points and if you put me back i don't get any points i still have to win because of your starting position sure so yeah. i was hot and i ended up driving through the guys and i ended up winning still and i've always been a character when they <laughs> stick a microphone in my face so yes sir uh, <laughs> They uh, stuck a microphone in my face, and I said, well, you know, after the track was done fucking me, we got to racing. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so that was my first interview. Yes, sir. Interview. <laughs> yeah. So everybody got a good kick out of that. And, uh, and then uh, that, was, that was when they were doing the, uh, the COVID bullshit. And uh, so they had to, the whole world was on lockdown there, and you had to wear a mask inside the building anywhere. And, like, we're all trying to hide in the trailers with our masks off. And yeah. It was awful. I mean, it really was off an awful experience dealing with that COVID stuff. And uh, so we, uh, they, they call out for drivers to come do the, uh, you know, you walk with your state. And uh, there weren't too many people from Jersey out there. I think there was probably about three of us. And uh, I just said, guys, this is my first time out here. And I love my state. I'm holding my flag. And they're like, okay, fine. <laughs> so I'm walking with my flag. I was like, I got to do something. Like, this just, I'm, I already knew I wasn't qualified in. Like, I wasn't going to make it. Sure. So I'm like, I got to do something. I got to do something that people are going to really love. And uh, I know they throw the camera on the drivers, and it just worked out so perfect <laughs> that I had a beer that was, like, really shooken up because it got, it got run to me. And when I walked out there, I made sure that, I seen the camera people. They started pointing. I lifted that thing to the sky. I cracked it. And it blew beer all over half of them. <laughs> and I, I, and the best part is, everybody loved. I drank it through my mask. So. Yes. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> it, it was. It was like. It was like a big f you to the the mask community thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, after that, I couldn't breathe through my mask because it was all soaked. <laughs> but um, uh, the next year when we did the interview uh i, I took I, unfortunately ryan smith had to go get married because you know that was convenient and i couldn't <laughs> run the tulpa after that i love stephanie she's great so i just bust some balls but uh so i was in at his wedding and that was nice but the, the following year when we went back uh chris moore who is the uh uh i don't know what he was announcer for the the short sex series uh deo's deal Oh, uh, Fred Dale. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So he was out there, and from 
all the off season off season partying I do with all everybody. Like you know, I get to hang out with a lot of the other drivers from other divisions, and we we take off seri- off season very serious when it comes to drinking. And uh, so I mean, I've I've known a lot of these guys for a lot of years, and Chris came running over and he's like, "Hey, I just want to let you know, like, I made sure that I can." be the guy that interviews the winner of your heat race. I was like, oh, so no pressure, right? <laughs> so I made sure. Then we ended up winning and that was just phenomenal. It just I was I was more happy like literally I said it. I I only run out here to do interviews. Yes, sir. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. God. Yeah, it makes it fun. That's super But cool. I, I I really do I really do say anybody that has a chance to get out there, they should. That is, that is a, a really hard race, but the experience and seeing, seeing all that is just something. It is, it is really something. I want to go so bad. I mean, I got three kids, so I'm kind of locked up for right now. <laughs> my man, my my man puts in work. <laughs> I got a five year old, a four year old, and a one year old right now. So I'm, they're still super young. Good for you, bud. <laughs> But that's a lot of quarter midgets, bud. That's too many. <laughs> I can't even. Uh, nope. They, these these kids are just watching racing. Don't worry. <laughs> Get them into football. They, you gotta make daddy some money. Exactly. You're gonna play for Penn State. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, I think we're winding down here a little bit. Uh, this at this point in the show, we usually just kind of hand the reins over to you. Not the, not that you know you had the reins from the beginning, but uh. Kind of always in control. <laughs> always in control. I'm completely no matter out of what. control. <laughs> always I'm in control. Because I'm out of control. Out of control. <laughs> uh, just to kind of shout out people who've gotten you where you're at, or sponsors, Facebook stuff. You know where you're, where the next drinking party is, or something. Whatever you want to talk about. It's uh, you know, floor's yours to kind of shout out whoever and whatever you want. I guess I could thank some of the people that have been helping me over the years. Uh, one of them that I, we don't talk about anymore, and you guys are going to know this name, is Rich Glosser. He uh, He's still in it quietly, but he still likes to check in on the guys that he's raced with for all the years that he's been around. Like, he, you know, he owned Alex's cars, Tyler Walton's cars, Zierfoss's cars. Uh, but he still reaches out to me. We've been real tight buddies, good drinking buddies. Uh, he helps me out. Um, Keith McIntyre, my partner, great guy. Um, got the McIntyre tree service up out of Stroudsburg area. Um, I really, honestly, if it wasn't for him, I probably would have quit two years ago. So I blame him (laughs) and I'm mad at him. So, um, who else? Um, Kelly racing fuels. They helped me out a ton. Uh, Timmy's with the shocks, Tim Buckwalter there. Um, a whole bunch of people that actually helped me out and, oh, uh, white siding, uh, white siding and windows. They're out of uh, the Upper Black Eddy area of Pennsylvania. Um, and then I got to thank Miller Lite for making the most delicious fine pilsner that there is. It's delicious. It Hell gets yeah. us through. Uh, it's it's a therapist in every can, and uh, I think uh, more people should look into therapy. Agreed. But hey, I mean. Next time, next time you come to Hamlin or wherever we can link up, I think we make yeah. a little commercial. Send it to Miller Lite or whoever I don't know what company makes Miller Lite, but uh, uh yeah. Miller and Coors. They okay, they're on. I don't know this much about my product, but I really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll make we'll make a cool little commercial with you and uh, all your swag, and then you know the, the racing and stuff. We'll <laughs> ship it off to Miller and see if. Uh, we get some nibbles, you know? See, if, yeah, see if they bite, right? Yeah, I'd be like, this dude is your loyal. And I'm going to put an <laughs> emphasis on loyal customer. And he wants to just show everybody how great it is. So if he yeah. can win more races, he can drink more beers and more people are going to drink your product. Yeah. So. Let's see if we hear this one. <laughs> yes, Let's sir. see if we can hear this one. Do we get that one? A little, a little click. Bit. I heard a click. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, God, go, ahead, go ahead, Kyle. No, I'm just yeah. laughing. You're just That's chilling. <laughs> well, Rob, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. It's been, it's hey, been thanks for having fantastic, me, guys. It was man. Fun. I, we should we should do it again real soon because I'm sure there's plenty more stories. We could probably stay oh here for God. another hour. I, I I'll, bet. I'll, I'll give you uh, next time we do this. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll write you a uh, a heads up of stories you can ask me, and I'll tell you all about them. 
I next, can't wait. Pro- next time you next Probably, time you come to uh, Hamlin, make sure you win, and we'll do we'll do a podcast in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we want to do that. One. Yes, I'll, sir. Uh, I'll have to I'll edit drop. some stuff out, maybe some nudity. Who knows? But we'll just get, we'll get it going. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'll drop whatever I'm doing we'll, and drive up there we'll be, to meet you. We'll be sure to uh, put a stripper pole in the, the trailer for that weekend. Exactly. <laughs> That'd be great, man. But uh, yeah, it's been super fun. I wish we get a. Uh, we're gonna do another one at some point because this was uh, this was fantastic. It's probably the most fun show so far. Um, hope you can make uh, it. Suck on that, Joey. <laughs> Joey, <Bishop. laughs> Joey. Joey did have a good, a good, uh, you know, how he got into racing story with uh, yeah, a yoga ball and and some ballet stuff. So that was. I got a funny. couple years on the kid. I'll let him. I'll let him work up to it. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's been having. A, he's had a hard time in that six hundred man. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Even the big car. The big car, honestly, has been having a harder time. I think than the six hundred. I mean. That was a I, that was a brand new car he just stuffed into the wall up at uh, Williams Grove, and it wasn't his fault. The steering no. box uh, broke. You could tell when it so did too. He, it just he, shot him right to the left, yeah, right to the right. He, he hit that wall a ton. I'm glad he's okay. Um, but that car's destroyed. So that sucks. <laughs> yep. I guess that uh, sucks Brian more. Zick is just, that probably sucks more Brian for his Zick dad. Is <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Or wh- whoever whoever <laughs> pays for that shit. I don't know. His uh, dad and his mom. <laughs> JPA masonry. Yes, sir. Still crushing it. Still oh, crushing it. Fun. That's right. But yeah, hopefully you make it up to Hamline. I know they're planning on doing a handful of uh, winged races this year too. Like they were gonna yeah, have. I'd like, I'd, I'd like to give it at least one more go. Sure, sure. Because they were gonna, they were gonna yeah. have one this weekend, but it unfortunately got rained out. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on that on that schedule. See when they're gonna do another one. Maybe you can make it up. They're going to do a winged show at Kutztown this year, supposedly. Really? Yeah. I, they're going to do a Super Dirt Car Series race. They're going to put the Modifieds on there. I will 100% be there if I can, if, if I can swing it. Cause... I will totally be there, too. Hammered on the infield like normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can watch them yell at each other and crash into each other because it's going to be exactly. brutal. It's going to be like, I think it's about the size of Mockatech, maybe smaller. No, it's way smaller. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Mockatech was a tiny track, and they used to run... What they started, oh, yeah. they started like I, 25 seen, uh, modifieds. I might be dating myself, but I seen Tommy Hager run there. <laughs> the 43. That's an old name. Yeah. Big it is. Tom Hager. Oof. But hey, it is yes, what sir. It is. But hey, appreciate you coming on. Uh thanks everybody for watching. Uh we'll be back next week. I'm not sure who the guest is gonna be next week, but uh thanks to our sponsors, MCM Contract, and they help us out a lot. Uh, Bodie Marks Racing, the Shop Automotive Detailing, uh, Smith Fabrication, Stage 1 Modifieds. You can catch those at Hamlet Speedway. DH Graphics, ProTac Roofing, uh, Nate Freed Racing. I uh, appreciate all the support, everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, Rob, for being here. It's been a freaking blast. Hopefully, we can do it again soon. And hopefully, we can uh, meet up at the track. And, Absolutely. Uh, crack, crack a couple cold ones, man. That's how we do it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, appreciate you coming on. Thanks, for everybody, for watching. We'll see you guys next week.